It's okay. It's okay. He's with me. Uh, Arnie, what a lovely surprise. I'm so sorry. We did not mean to spring mm. ourselves on you. Uh, nonsense. It's always wonderful to see you and, and still the same beauty. Mm. I say, would you care for a cup of tea? Uh, we still have your usual blend. Oh, I'd love a cup of tea. Hello, Bonnie. Oh, sorry. Um, Paddington, this is my friend, Billy Ross. Billy, Paddington has been with the McLaren family forever. My apologies, Mr. Ross. I thought you were an intruder. We do get them, you know, trying to take away the antiquities. Oh, don't worry about it. It was worth it. Where'd you get those moves? You could cut air. Yes, well... I'm surprised Ian didn't mention my coming. He did invite me. Well, he begged me, actually, to tell you the truth. As well he should. Actually, the Duke did mention that you were going to be joining us, but he... he did, I must have misunderstood. I thought it wasn't until next week. Oh, I didn't tell him when I was coming, or even if. And then, well, just last minute, I decided... <sighs> Lucky for us, you did. Well, if I could just freshen up really quick before I saw Well, him. there's no need to rush. Uh, the Duke is away on a hunting trip with his uncle, and he won't be back until next week. Ah! Look at that. My manicure is just... She's going to think you're great. She's going to love you. What does she look like? Because I'll give her a call, and I'll apologize. Oh, yeah, you don't fool me. Chloe. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, let's uh let's let's do lunch on Friday. Sounds great. I'll see you then. <sighs> Tamara, listen. Uh about our thing. Well, how, how you doing? Well, I know you're fine. I said how you doing? Huh? Okay, listen. Our thing on Friday. Can we push that back to 3:30 cuz something came up? All right. We will sweat. Yes, we will. I said, yes, we will. Okay, bye. I know you're fine. I said, how are you doing? Hey, that just happens to be my new trainer who, by the way, does, uh... She does redefine the phrase hard body. <laughs> Not your body I'm worried about. It's your mind, honey. Oh, another night like last night and... Huh. What are you talking about? They loved us last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got home about, what, 4 o'clock in the morning? I do have that covered. I have three more girls coming in next week. You still miss Bonnie. I didn't ask her to quit. You know something, Isaac Jenkins? You may be a lot of things, but I have never taken you for a stupid man. No, because a stupid man wouldn't read the white of writing on the wall, okay? A stupid man would go chasing after I don't know what, instead of looking at the hundreds of thousands of opportunities that exist. Yeah. Define yeah. young, ripe opportunities. Yeah. You know, you just, you keep this up. You keep this up, and I'll think Bonnie had every right to leave you. I'll... Hey, Lisa, uh, yeah, I yeah, really want to, I, um... <sighs> so you mad at me, too? You had yourself a night. It happens. Look, it shouldn't have happened, and it's not going to happen again. I'm really very sorry. It's cool. Okay? okay. You and Katie all right? Yeah, we're good. We're good, and, uh, Dahlia's gone never to return. How'd you manage that? Well, let's just say that, uh, Dahlia's no longer a problem. I've seen this before. Simon and I talked about it. So the fact that Dahlia had it in her car... Would Dahlia is, has issues. What kinds of issues? Well, how would you feel if your star, the person that you had just dumped megatons of publicity on, was married to someone who has a PR problem? Hmm. She was just trying to protect me too much, and Simon didn't really like it. Well, I could see that. But last night, we worked everything out. When? Uh, Ed. Is there a problem, Margo? I mean, what's... Did Dahlia come to you with that? Because she promised me that she would just let this go. Dahlia's rented car was found about a mile from here. It was abandoned on the side of the road. The door was open, keys were missing, and her purse was on the ground. Was she in an accident? We don't know exactly what happened, but there were signs of struggle. What, like a carjacking? Well, Katie, generally a carjacking results in a car being stolen, not just abandoned. You know, I told her to park in the garage. She's been staying at the Lakeview, and she keeps insisting on parking out front because she said the attendants are too slow. They probably just stole it and brought it out here to strip it. 
No, probably not, because they left her purse with a wallet full of cash and credit cards. All right, um, I'm just going to call her on her cell. I'm sure we can figure this all out. She'll answer it. She always does, even in restaurants and meetings. <sighs> I got a voicemail. I didn't even know she had voicemail. All right, I'll just call Crimson Dahlia. That's from her production company. She should definitely be there. Hey, it's Katie. Um, listen, can I talk to Dahlia? Oh. Yeah, okay. Um, have her call me. The office hasn't heard from her. Katie, did you or Simon see Dahlia after the party last night? Like somebody to sneak up from behind? Neither do I. Mrs. McKinnon, the night of the murder, Nick Scudder's murder, you were there, yes? Well, no, I wasn't there. You when were he was not in Nick Scudder's apartment? Yes, but not when he was. Thank at... you, Mrs. McKinnon. No, you didn't let me You're finish. Honor, I wasn't you there when he was at the Mrs. witness. Mrs. McKinnon, please restrict your answers to yes or no unless otherwise instructed. Sorry, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. McKinnon, would you please tell the court what you saw when you arrived at Nick Scudder's room that night? What I saw? The door was shut. But I heard some music, so I knew somebody was there. So I started knocking on the door, pounding, actually, and calling out names. And the door must have been unlatched because it opened. And I went in and I saw Nick lying on the floor, face down. The back of his head was wet. He was bleeding. He was dead. What else did you see, Mrs. McKinnon? I heard someone moaning like they were in pain. And there she was. She was on the floor. She was crouched on the floor, curled up in a ball, and she was in shock. Who was? My daughter. I'm sure that was a difficult moment. You have no idea. Mrs. McKinnon, I'll remind you that you are still under oath. Oh, I'm aware of that. Thank you. Then can you please explain to the court why your testimony here today contradicts your statements to the police the night of the Objection, murder? Objection, Your Honor. Request for sidebar. Carly, is that you? I hope so. It's hard to know anymore. They told me to call you. I, I don't know why. Because I'm trying to help you. Now, are you all right? Are they treating you all right? I'm tired. They keep moving me around. How's Parker? He's fine. I saw him just the other day. He's with John. And Jack? Uh, Jack is in Switzerland. He found the spa, but they'd already moved. Now, is Emily with you? I, do, I don't know. I, I haven't seen her in, in a while. Or Rose, Craig, they, they may be dead. And I don't want to die here all alone. You won't. You won't, okay? Now, Rose is home. She escapes. She did? And I'm going to get you out of there as soon as I can. But you have to stay strong and know that I love you and I'm coming to get you. Now, can you tell me anything about where you are? I have to go now. Carly, promise me you'll hang in. Pro promise me. I'll try. Carly, I am going to get you out of there, I promise. C Carly! Carly? Do you have a nice chat with Jack's girlfriend? What do you want? I want you to get me the hell out of here. That was our deal. Now, I've lived up to my end of the bargain. I'll be there. I'll be looking forward to it.
Maggie, it's me. Would you tell Mrs. Himmel I wanted to track down a phone number? Ian's gone? I'm so sorry, miss. If we'd have known, I would have... Oh, no, it's not your fault. It's my fault. I should have called you. Perhaps I could leave a message on his cellular phone, but, uh, you know, the Duke, when he's hunting, he never picks up his messages. No, you're right. He disappears. You know, I, I saw this guy once on Survivor. He took down this pig with his bare hands. It was just him and the pig. Well, and the knife. And then he took the blood and he smeared it all over his face. Uh, Ian usually rides to hounds, Billy. Or sometimes they go birding. Yeah, you, you mean golf. No, I mean birds. He shoots birds? Yes. Why? Mr. Ross, is it? You can, um, <clears throat> call me Billy. Did Mr. Ross help you in with your baggage? Well, Billy lives in Oakdale with me. I see. I'll put your baggage in the East Wing. Thank you, Paddington. Oh, and I will find... I'll find suitable accommodation for Mr. Ross in the village. There's a charming little guest house. Oh, no, that won't be necessary, Paddington. I'm sure Ian would want Billy to stay here as his guest, since Billy's my guest and I'm Ian's guest. Yeah, and then you can teach me some of those Zorro moves. Or... maybe not. I'm sure Paddington would love to give you a lesson or two, wouldn't you, Paddington? I'll put Mr. Ross's baggage in the North Wing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paddington. Sorry, Billy. Why? I mean, this place is off the map. Off the grid is more like it. The North Wing is freezing. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll survive. Hey, do you think I can fit in this? Uh, touch it and Paddington will hurl you off a cliff. Oh, you just wait. Wait till me and Zoro get down. Okay, I'm glad you're happy, Billy. Me? I'm going to freshen up. I'm going to freshen up. Is that attitude? Okay. Listen, you better not get lost. Because you know these castles, they've got secret passageways and dungeons. And ghosts. <laughs> That's a Kodak moment. <laughs> Glad that you and uh, Katie worked things out. You got a lot going. The house and uh, that video thing, which, by the way, I think is going to be a major hit. Yeah, no, I hope so. But you know, if it doesn't work out, whatever. I mean, we still got each other, right? Here's a man who has his priorities in order. Lisa, what I was trying to say, I'm so sorry about last night. I oh, no, Don't, don't apologize. You were just simply taking up for the woman you love. Unlike Isaac, who just let Bonnie go without a word. That's yeah. nice, Lisa. Just spread my business all over town. All right, honey, I will. <laughs> Women, they stick together. Whoa, what happened? You know, uh, planes? Bonnie took one straight to Scotland, I guess, or... Should I say Duchess McLaren has returned to her roots? Was she marrying this guy? If that's what it takes. I'm definitely not going to come between a woman and her tiara. That's what she wants. And, uh, oh. oh, what do you want? Me? No, no, listen. Yeah, you. What do you want? What, are we on Oprah here? Or it's what? just a question. That I'm not going to answer. Why? Oh, come on, don't be gutless. G gutless? That, that, that's nice. Mr. Disrespect his lady in front of the whole town is going to give me love okay, life. I apologize life. for that. We're moving on. Oh, that's, that's nice. Come on, don't be stupid about this. If you like this girl, Okay, then... look, now, that's the second time today somebody's called me stupid. Then maybe you start to listen. Look, all I'm saying is that if I'd let Katie walk away, she'd be gone. Just like Bonnie. Where did Dahlia go after the party? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. <laughs> I didn't ask about Dahlia. I asked about you and Simon. Uh, yeah, I told you we slept here at the cottage last night. Did you or Simon see Dahlia after the party last night? Katie? Uh, no, actually, uh, we didn't see her. You want to try again? Okay, um... Yeah, uh, she came by the cottage to talk to Simon.
Did you see her? No, I, uh, she left before I got home. Did Simon tell you what they talked about? Yeah, just more of the same. So they just continued the argument that they started? Well, you know what? It wasn't like that. Dahlia was just really resentful because I wouldn't take her side against my own husband's. You know, about him being a liability PR-wise. And so, um, at the party, she actually offered to back out of our deal. You know, she said that she would finish the launch and then I could buy her out of her contract and go on without her. So I happily agreed to that. And um, obviously she wasn't too happy about it and she expressed that to him. Hmm. So, Simon won. Right. Where is Simon? Oh, he's just running errands. What errands? I don't know. My husband says he's gonna run errands. I don't give him the third degree. Yes, knowing you, you do. Well, that's just because you had him keeping secrets from me, but he's not doing that anymore. So, Katie, where is he? Ah. Would you like me to have him call you when he gets home? Yes, that would be very nice. Fabulous. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some curves to make. Yeah. <laughs> thing that I did, but you have to understand, I was just so scared Oh, and... please, please, just save it for the jury. But I, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Yeah. First you let Molly, and now you let Abigail be indicted for a crime they didn't commit. And you don't want anybody to be hurt. Are you testifying today, Mrs. Hughes? Oh, you bet your boots I am. And I'm going to put the blame right where it belongs, in your lap. Mrs. McKinnon recanted her initial statement to the police. Mrs. McKinnon is not in jeopardy here. No? Her daughter's the defendant. Mrs. McKinnon made two statements, and the jury deserves to hear them both, Your Honor. I agree. Then, Your Honor, I would like the fact that Mrs. McKinnon recanted her initial statement be included in the record. I'll take it under advisement. Mrs. McKinnon, this statement, exhibit number 14, was made by you to the Oakdale police just a few hours after Nick Scudder's death. Is it correct? This is my statement, but I'm not yes sure of the exact Yes or no, Mrs. Time. McKinnon? Yes. Thank you. Would you please read the paragraph highlighted in yellow? Aloud, Mrs. McKinnon, so the jury can hear you. I went to buy some time. The door was open and I saw Abigail's purse. Nick was there. See, this isn't what just happened. Read I talked the to the police. Please, Mrs. McKinnon. Your Honor, I'm just trying to put it in context. That's not your job, Mrs. McKinnon. Please read the paragraph. He wanted the money and I told him I didn't have it. We argued and I lost my temper. I told him I was wearing a wire and that I'd let Abigail hear the whole thing. He lost it and grabbed me trying to find the wire. I tried to fight him off, but he was so strong. I grabbed the music box and hit him and he stopped. The paragraph you just read, which is a statement you made to the police, was in fact a lie, wasn't it, Mrs. McKinnon? Yes, but I came yes forward a few weeks later. Mrs. McKinnon. Yes. Were you coerced into making this statement? No. My daughter was her honor. Yes or no, Mrs. McKinnon? I'm sorry, Your Honor. On the night Nick Scudder died, when you were found at the scene, you were in fact told not to talk to the police, to keep quiet. Isn't that true? Yes. And yet you refused to take that advice. You knowingly and deliberately confessed to a crime you didn't commit. Isn't that true, Mrs. McKinnon? Yes. Why? Why did you lie to the police, Mrs. McKinnon? Why did you obstruct justice and hamper this investigation? Look, I told the truth. When? Later, I, in my second statement. 
Oh, your second statement, which is more reliable because... Because it's the truth. And we know this because... No, really, Mrs. McKinnon. How do we know that your second statement is any more reliable than your first? Enlighten me, please, Mrs. McKinnon. I know what you're doing. You're twisting everything to make it look like I'm a liar. Oh, but you are a liar, Mrs. McKinnon. And we have it all on record. Objection. Was the hot water to your satisfaction, miss? Oh, it was divine, Paddington. I could have seen the bathtub all day. <laughs> Did anyone call for me? Oh, yes, you had a message. Really? Your mother called. I informed her that you'd arrived safely. Oh, I see. Thank you, Paddington. His grace will call as soon as he knows you're here. What? Oh, Ian. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sure he will. Bend your knees. Bend my knees. Oh, technique. I love it. Bend your knees. All right. Who ran over your dog? He's going to be married in this room. Well, you still can if that's what you want. I thought he would have called by now. This Grace? Isaac. Oh, Isaac, yeah, right. Mr. Cool Dude? No, I'm not on your life. You're gonna have to go crawling after him, Bonnie. Well, forget it. You know, I don't think Plaid Man's gonna play our game either. Plaid Man? That's what um, Isaac calls him when you're not around. When he's not calling him Ian. <laughs> Ugh, what is it with you, man? Why are you so impaired? Hey, as soon as Plaid Man takes a look at you, You remember Bruno? Ah, Mr. Kiss Me, I'm Italian. Who could ever forget Bruno? Yeah, that's the one. Katie goes away to St. Martin with him for a weekend, right? Now, I could let it go. If she wants to be with him, fine, I'm done. The thing is, Katie was only trying to provoke me into a reaction about how I felt about her. And that's the female way. They don't get what they want, they start playing games. I'm not playing any games. But then you're not gonna win. Fine. Is it? Let me tell you something, brother. They get you down on your knees, you ain't never getting up. Look, she's down there with you. That's what it's all about. Come on, Isaac. Are you really willing to let Bonnie go? The prosecution is badgering the witness. Permission to treat the witness as hostile, Your Honor. I'll allow it. In that case, I must insist that the record reflect the statement that Mrs. McKinnon just read was recanted weeks ago. It has been amended to the satisfaction of the Oakdale Police Department, and therefore, no charges were ever filed in this matter. You may establish that when the case goes to the defense. Proceed, Ms. Hart. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. McKinnon, you told the police that you killed Nick Scudder in self-defense. But you aren't the one standing trial here now, are you? You expect me to answer that? Your daughter Abigail is standing trial. But you were there that night, weren't you, Mrs. McKinnon? You were in Nick Scudder's room, his body not more than a few feet away from you. Isn't that true? Yes. Then why did you confess to his murder? Is that a difficult question, Mrs. McKinnon? Well, let's take it from the top. You told us that when you arrived at Nick Scudder's apartment, you banged on the door, which opened. Nick was lying on the floor, bleeding to death. Your daughter was crouched nearby, so why did you confess to killing a man who was already dead when you got there? Because she'd been beaten and traumatized, and I wanted to spare her. I wanted to get her to a doctor as quickly as possible. So you had a friend take her to the hospital while you stayed behind to lie to the police, yes? Yes. Was she admitted into the hospital? No. So her injuries were minor. She'd been hit hard enough on the head to make her fall to the floor. But you didn't know that yet, did you, Mrs. McKinnon? Because you were unable to talk to Abigail at that point. Because Abigail had been traumatized, that's the point. You're a good mother, aren't you, Mrs. McKinnon? In fact, would it be safe to say that Abigail is the center of your life? My family means more to me than anything in the world, yes. And you would do anything to protect your child, including getting her out of that apartment before the police arrive. Objection. I'll rephrase. Mrs. McKinnon, 
When you saw your daughter crouched on the floor, what was your first thought? I was scared. Afraid that she'd been hurt? Scared of what? We've already established that her injuries were minor, so what were you scared of? I didn't know that then. It wasn't that logical. If you saw your child laying there on the floor... You would want to protect her, to save her, to take the blame if you could. Isn't that correct? She didn't do it. Then why not tell the police that, Mrs. McKinnon? Why muddy the waters by confessing to the murder yourself? I mean, admit it. You were afraid that she had killed him. And that's why you wanted to get her out of that apartment. And that's why you insisted on taking the blame yourself. Because you wanted to protect her. You thought she was guilty, didn't you, Mrs. McKinnon? I'm glad you're here, Billy. If I had to sit here for a week in this freezing mausoleum with no one but Paddington to keep me company, well, I'd probably start talking to the paintings. Be careful, they may talk back. Or bark back. Well, you know what I mean, Paddington, with you being so busy doing what you do, and, well, what would I do with myself? Yes, the, the seventh Duchess of Glasgow went stark raving mad. Oh, but that's another story. Her tea is almost ready. Smoked salmon and cucumber sandwiches. Oh, oh sweet, bring it on. You know, I could eat a sheep. Thank you, Paddington. That would be wonderful. I'll save the sheep for supper. <laughs> bah. I told you you would warm up to me. Well, I'm glad someone's warm. You'd think with all of Ian's millions, he'd invest in a new boiler. Oof. Uh, Billy, what are you doing? Shh, look. I'm looking for the switch. You know where the bookcase turns around and the secret patchway opens up? Ooh. <laughs> Okay, you've been watching way too many Abbott and Costello movies. And how do you think they got their idea? <laughs> See, this is what happens when it's freezing temperatures. Everything starts creaking. Okay, no, you're and... telling me that that book case right there shrugged that book out by itself. What? It's Anne's journal. Bonnie wants a fairy tale, she went to the right place. Me, I live in the real world. In the real world, yeah, right here, by yourself. Not for long, friend, not for long. Look, if that's what you want, fine, but I kind of gathered that you wanted more out of life than that. It takes two. Well, just don't count her out. Oh, I'm Simon, saying. I'm so glad I found you. We've got to go. I'm sorry, Isaac. Well, what's going on? I, I don't have time to explain. Just trust me, you've got to get out of here. Let's go. I... I don't remember. Well, then let me refresh your memory. Nick Scudder is lying dead from a blow to the back of his head. Your daughter is crouched nearby, and you decided what, Molly? To get her out of that apartment and take the blame yourself. Why? Because you thought she was guilty. You thought your daughter had killed Nick I would Scudder. not sit here and let you railroad me into saying something that will hurt my daughter, because she has been hurt enough. Move to strike, Order. Your Honor. Non-responsive. The witness's remarks will be struck before the No, Your record. Honor, I'm just telling the truth. This woman, she doesn't care who she hurt. She just wants to win her case and to hell with my daughter. Your Honor, if I might have a word with the witness. Mrs. McKinnon, you will control yourself or I'll find you. Go ahead, hand. Judge. Go ahead. You find me. You just, you send me to jail. Do whatever. I don't really care. I am her mother. And I will not say anything or do anything to send my own daughter to jail. She thought she didn't do anything wrong. Molly. Answer the question. You know, after our last big fun, I thought I'd hear from you. But then I'm not an easy girl to find. I run a tabloid. It wasn't that hard. Yes, right. So, what do you want, handsome? Would you say that to all the newspaper tycoons? I want a favor. And as I recall, you owe me. So read it. I can't. The man asks you to marry him, and then he cheats on you. You don't owe him squat, Bonnie. It's not that, Billy. It's just, well, I won't behave that way. I won't just go and pry into someone else's personal journal. OK, that's cool, but that's why I thought we were here. What do you mean? I thought you wanted to know what plaid man really feels about you before you disconnect Isaac for good. Whoa! I don't have time to explain, Simon. Let's go. I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. <sighs> All right, fine. Dahlia is missing. Her car was found abandoned near our cottage, and Margot wants to interrogate you what? now. You heard her. 
You know, not only should I haul you in for lying to a police officer, but Katie, you ran a red light at Pinewood. One more outburst, Mrs. McKinnon, and I won't bother with a fine. I'll have you jailed for contempt. Have I made myself clear? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed, Miss Hart. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. McKinnon, once again, I'll ask you, the night Nick Scudder died, did you think that Abigail had killed him? I didn't think. I didn't let myself think. I just took yes care of myself. Yes or health. no, Mrs. McKinnon, did you think Abigail killed Nick Scudder? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't think the jury heard that. Did you think that Abigail killed Nick Scudder? <laughs> yes. For a brief moment, yes, okay? I might have thought that my daughter killed Nick Scudder. A legendary performer, fans worldwide, and now the comeback special. Who are you expecting? Elvis? Celine Dion is back. With superstar guests Destiny's Child and Brian McKnight. Let me share my new life and songs with you in one unforgettable night. Celine, a new day has come. CBS Sunday.